my beautiful guest is from Kenya and she's been a good friend of mine for the last or for over a decade for over a decade some people are asking on whatsapp am i online already and it's going to be tough can't see it uh, some people said they can't see it i can see some whatsapp messages uh we are live we are live. so my beautiful guest as i was saying is from kenya i've been a good she has been a good friend of mine somebody i look up to and i respect so much for the last dec uh, one decade yeah i say no answer thank you mr kikumi for joining my old guy. <laughs> thank you sir i'm glad to see you you know anytime i see you i get energy thank you so much thank you for joining so we just want to talk about instilling discipline in children today because i find i've come to realize that a lot of parents they've missed up the word discipline and punishment a lot of parents a lot of parents missed up the word discipline and punishment there is a huge gap between the word discipline and punishment and if you cannot clarify these two words if you cannot give right meaning to these two words it's going to be very difficult in order for you to instill discipline in your children because oh finally i think i'm getting her uh rachel can you hear me punishment is making a child to suffer for breaking rules when you have to pay for breaking the rules there is a set rule and i've used i've said that in many of my videos yes yes you can also i can also say the same thing yes she's freezing i can see her but she's freezing that means she can't hear me yet but she needs to confirm that vpn is on so i've said this in every uh many of my videos about setting a rules having rules for the family having rules for your children so when a child or the children break the rule, it's when you punish them, when you let them pay for what they have done, that is punishment, paying for what you have done, having consequence on your bad behavior. When you have to pay, mommy said don't touch, and you ended up touching that. I don't know what measure of punishment you use, maybe it's gonna be negative reinforcement or positive punishment or negative punishment. In this process, it's, is a punishment when you pay back when you have to pay for what you have done it is punishment why discipline is teaching teaching your child how not to break the rules i'm trying to get out from dictionary meaning and just bring it as simple as possible for you to understand the huge difference between discipline and punishment when you try to teach your child to follow the rules that is discipline you instill it uh, we're talking about instilling discipline in children. I was trying to explain the huge difference between discipline and punishment. When you let a child pay for what he or she has done, when you just give, we just pay back time. You didn't listen, maybe by eating or by uh, extension or taking something out or losing the screen time or by spanking. It is punishment. You are paying back for what you have done. Why discipline? It is when you teach your child on how to make a better choice so that he or she doesn't have to uh, go through discipline. You, you teach your child systematically. This is how you do. If you make this choice, it's going to be an awesome thing for you. If you do this, it's going to be great. If you do that, it's going to be awesome. So we're talking about discipline. And um, please, if you have any question, just drop your question so that we can uh, address it. Even as I wait for my guests. Now I have guests because I'm also waiting for Mr. Kikumi. So, uh, and a lot of things, a lot of video I've done in the past that is going to make you understand this particular topic so well. I've done because we cannot talk about discipline without talking about some things. And because we have done that before, I've made it. I made this kind of video before, and I'm just going to be referring to some episode that is going to help you to understand this topic very well. So please just go to our YouTube channel, and if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I am begging. Come on. I know you love me. I don't have to ask you if you love me. Just go ahead and search for the Vision Guide YouTube channel. Oh, beautiful. Can't you see? Beautiful. She's my pastor's wife. She's my pastor's wife. I'm changing over. That's why the earpiece is not the same. And I don't get comfortable using, what do you call this one? The wireless one. I tried it, but it's not my thing. 
<laughs> all right okay all right thank you very much for coming back thank you for joining i love you <laughs> thank you mr kikumi please don't go i need to see my boss right here because i might bring you in anytime please stay there that's my boss thank you so much mr kikumi for joining sorry i pulled all right you can see my 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 beautiful friend is there we've been friend just as i said earlier for over a decade and uh, she's the wife of, a, of an handsome pastor she's from kenya she's a beautiful mother to a beautiful children three beautiful children awesome children and she's somebody whose parenting skills has been tested and trusted at a point we were both waiting on god for children at a point and uh, god came through for her she became mother of two and why i joined the journey after that uh, but in this period of my waiting and God answered her, I was able to see her as a role model, somebody I can really emulate a ways of parenting skills. I saw some things that she did and I said, oh my, this one I'm keeping them. Once my children come, because I was very sure I was going to have them anyways, it's just a matter of time, it's a question of time. I held on to those skills and uh, the, the, the uh, special parenting, the positive parenting that I saw in her, and I did, of course, use them on my children. So I am very happy to be bringing her here on our pa platform, the parent, uh, the vision guide on this special, ep uh, special episode of Parenting Essentials. She is the beautiful queen from Kenya. Thank you so much for joining me, Rachel Monene. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me. I've said a lot about you before you came. However, I need to say this again. Okay, so thank you so much for waiting. I, I, I feel like coming to your houses and just give you all, 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 because this is awesome, you know? When you feel that you're not alone, for you to, I've given you a lot of work. Go there, go here. But you're not even looking at this girl. You waited. And when I said that you love me, I was very sure. I wasn't mistaken. That is love, and I'm not taking it for granted. Thank you very much. Thank you once again for coming on this uh, platform this morning, ma'am. And I'm so happy to have you here. Without wasting much of time, because we've, time is already fast spent, I'm just going to be straight, uh, going straight into what we have to say today. So uh, I've been talking about punishment and discipline. And I, I, today's topic is about instilling uh, discipline in children. So I want you to start in your own world. What is discipline? And also, please explain to your house, because I know your children are disciplined. It's not because you're seated. I know them, I've seen them, and I love them. I want you to explain to us, everyone that is watching this afternoon, how have you been able to instill discipline in your children? Over to you, ma'am. Well, uh... Thank you. To start with, I'll uh, say good afternoon to everyone. Good morning, uh, depending on where you're She's soft-spoken. I said it earlier. I... I'm just going to tell me, sorry, sorry, please. I'm just going to tell her to please increase the volume mm -hmm. a little bit. She's very soft-spoken. You might need to increase the volume from your hand. She's an angel. All right, go ahead. All right. Um, good afternoon, like everyone. Us? And Ms. Oye, thank you so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you. It's Thank you for been a, my it's been a it's been a journey, <laughs> but finally we are here. Um, I'm glad. Well, we'll just go straight to what you ask. For me, uh, discipline is more of uh, trying to teach the children on how to manage their behavior. It's like a skill. You're trying to teach them on how to manage their behavior, and on how also to control themselves. Uh, Sometimes, you know, children go through some emotions or disappointments. So it's just trying to teach them to know when I'm angry, how do I manage it? Do I react? You know, uh, do I just get it out on somebody or do uh, have tantrums, which is not good. So it's just trying to get them to, to control that, you know, that temper or that anger. Uh, being in control of themselves and whereas punishment is more of getting the child you know as you said earlier getting the child to pay for their mistake you know it's a penalty for an offense that a child has done so that's how I see uh, the difference between the two because in punishment you find that the parent is more in charge uh, the the child is not in charge and when it comes to discipline sometimes you get the child involved you know, you get the child involved in it. So, yeah, 
that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You've spoken well and I love that. So in punishment, please underline. If you can get a pen, that would be very good. You can see I love learning a lot. You can see I'm ready to learn a lot from R this afternoon. In punishment, children are not involved. It's your thing. It's your way. You just want to pay back. You want to spank. You want to take out something. You want to lend them to lose their fun time. But in discipline, they are involved. It's two together. It's just when I was talking, I think in clear direction, I was talking about making the rules together with your children. You know, when you let them see reasons, you don't just jump into conclusion. Uh, growing up from an African family, Nigeria is precisely, for you that know Yoruba parents, even, even though my own parents were a little bit soft, and in fact, my mom is very, very soft, even my dad in this aspect, but the, and, you know, community policing, Everybody is your mother. <laughs> Everybody is your father. Yeah. And they have to just give it to you raw. Come. Even your, even, you know, everybody is your mother. You have to see them as your parents. So there's a, there, were, there were a lot of things that were just dropped on us. And you were not allowed to ask why. At that point, a lot of things were, were going. I, you know, so when, sometimes when I see it, and I think about growing up, like I just want to correct a lot of things in our generation and in the next generation so that they don't end up doing the same mistake our parents did or we doing the same mistake or they doing the same mistake we are not we were not allowed to ask why this why that you want to just to get a bit quiet or some people will even stop slap you and tell you i am going to tell your mother i slapped you it was nothing you are very rude how could you ask but that the truth is that the child is not asking out of being rude but the child is asking sincerely to understand so in instilling discipline in discipline, is you making the child understand, not just jumping into, don't go there. Children of these days want to know why, mommy. You know, for me personally, because I was brought up like that, not to ask why, it took when I became a mother, I had to train myself to accept that why it's okay. At first, I was like, why? You know, then I realized that I, want to, I wanted to do the same mistake, the same old way thing, then I don't want to, then I have to teach my system. I have to teach myself that the child is sincerely asking why, because he or she doesn't understand. And if they understand, they will not do the mistake. The reason why a child is doing mistake over and again is because they don't even understand why. They don't understand yes. why. I'm not the guest today. I'm just going to go back to my guest. Mm -hmm. And please, can you just give us a few examples of the ways you were able to instill discipline in your own children? So just as you said, I mean, it's a two-way communication. Uh, many a times you find that as parents, we, we, don't, uh, we don't think that children have a personality of their own. We just, we don't like involve them as part of the family when we are making decisions. Mm -hmm. And therefore we need to relate to them as, you know, as the way I would relate to somebody that is an adult in my house. So it's the same thing. So whenever we are making any uh, rules or we are putting rules in place, we have to involve them. And as you said, we have to communicate as to why uh, we are punishing them or communicate as to why something is being taken away from them. And one of the things that we try to uh, implement in our home is there, we do try to bring about negative consequences and negative consequences can be something like, you know, a timeout or being grounded not to go. Maybe uh, when people are going to the park or people are going for a party, you're grounded. You not go for a party or you not go out with us because you did one, two, three things. Or the other uh, thing that will bring a negative consequence is uh, uh, trying to remove a privilege from the child. So mm -hmm. I remember there's a period where that was when my first son was four years old and the second one was maybe two years and the little one was still a baby. So we were planning to go out with the first two, which are boys. We were planning to take them to the park and then the baby, we were planning to leave her behind because we had an assistant then. So she was going to take care of her. So when we were about to go out of the house, the rule then was that if you misbehave, you're going to be grounded. And some minutes just before we left the house, he decided to do something. And the dad was so cross. So he just said, this is the rule. You're going to stay back. 
it was it was not a pleasant thing of course to us as parents because we really wanted them to go have fun together with the with the other sibling but because we had made the rule we had to follow through because the other thing with parenting if you make a rule and you don't follow through the child gets a you know there's a tendency of the child getting a, this idea that mom is just talking you know mom is not consistent she will say and she will stop you know something like that so we had to go out so we left him he cried but you know we had to do what we had to do then so even though we were supposed to take longer outside we did we didn't take longer because we really felt it but we did spend some time outside by the time we came back uh he was fine he was happy to see us of course and the funny thing is he he took a paper because you know the assistant just left him to play with his toys and he likes reading books to read his books so he wrote a paper and he gave it to us and he's on the paper on the note it said mommy and daddy i love you so much and i'm sorry for what i did you know it was all scribbled but you can read exactly what he was trying to say and that it showed us that he took time to think over what he had done and he was quite uh, apologetic and he realized that whatever he did was a mistake and then the other thing we do try to implement is take take away privileges um one of the privilege that we have in the house is cuz our children don't get to watch tv so they only watch television during weekends so because it's not a everyday thing they look forward to it you see so that is one of the privilege with you know adding that uh, you know screen time or television time to them it's it's more of a positive reward as well and uh, it's a, like a reward system i would say so they look forward to it so when you remove that like you know Thursday or Friday it's your screen time when you misbehave i'm going to take away screen time or when you misbehave uh, my older son likes playing uh, with lego you know those tiny build uh, blocks building blocks so i would take away the building blocks and put them aside for a while either two days or three days and then you know uh, because maybe when i was calling him he didn't you know respond because he was busy doing what he was doing with the lego so i said if this thing is going to take attention from you not to listen then i'm going to take it away for a period of time so when i'm ready to return it then i return it so it's just a matter of having that understanding so that they know because it helps them to know how to make a better choice next time you see and these are some of the negative consequences but there are also positive as uh, strategies or consequences that you can implement like i said you know the reward system the reward system helps the child to look forward to you know because they know they are gaining from it and the other thing is also praise when we praise them uh i want to say when it comes to praise also we have to be careful on how we praise our children because sometimes your praise you know one thing with praise are you praising the child to build his or her ego or are you praising the child to build the character in the child because sometimes if a child does well in something you might want to um praise him for the results you know like we had a we had a situation i think some months ago where my first son was going to do they had a spelling bee test at school so he was getting he was getting frustrated because he couldn't uh, you know get the you know the spellings correct it, there were like 25 words so we kept on trying with him some of them he gets them right some of them he gets them wrong uh to the point that he, you know he just gave up he started you know getting upset i said okay we'll leave it for a while and then we'll go over it again because he really wanted to participate in it so eventually when we started doing it with him even the brother and the sister joined in you know and they would just give him a word he will spell it and then give him some time go through it so after two days i think the spelling test was on in in the school so what happened is he did very well 
uh, I think because of the, you know, the effort that he, he did put in. And out of that, you find that when we went to pick him up from school, he was quite excited. He was super excited. And he was like, mommy, guess what? I did well in the spelling test and I'm going to the next level. And for us, we were, of course, we were happy for him. But then for us as parents, we, we like I said, we are supposed to praise the effort, uh, not the results. Of course, we were happy, but we kept on telling him, you see, the effort that you put in, that is what got you to that level. Uh, mm. So like the child has got to know that it's not just uh, you getting the results, but there's effort you know, needed for you to put in. And even though he went to the second level, and I think he was so happy also because he was the only boy in his class, you see? So even though he didn't get to, you know, to be the winner of the spelling bee test, but he came up as a, a runner's up, I think, and he also got a certificate. So the thing that we told him is you did well. And if you had not practiced, you know, uh, eventually giving to putting effort into what you're doing, this will not have been the results, but your efforts finally paid off. The other thing I would want to say with uh, praising children, I'll give an example. Um, like for example, in terms of maths, you know, one of my children uh, was struggling with maths. So we had to bring in uh, timetables, you know, we had to find a timetables chart. And through this, we got them to, you know, to learn the timetables, not like cramming it like we used to do back in our days. And out of that, you find that he's learning from his mistakes that I need to learn the timetables first to be able to, you know, you can't do much if you don't know the timetables. So trying to get the child to learn from their mistakes. And uh, as I said, it's more, whenever you're praising, it's more of building the character and not the ego. Because when you build the ego, the child might think that they are the only one, they are the best, you know, and they will not want to try um, to try to put much effort into doing anything, you know? I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. And then um, the reward system, there's different kinds of reward systems. There is, uh, you know, the stickers, especially when the kids are young because they love stickers, the stickers chart. Uh, yes. Uh, for us, currently, we've been using the star chart. We have a, uh, there's a board uh, that we call a stature that we got, but I mean, you don't have to buy it. You can even, you know, create your own and with the help of your child at home, because when you involve them also, it becomes more interesting. Um, so we have the stature whereby we have a list of things that a child needs to do, like, you know, make your own bed, maybe depending with the age of the child as well. Uh, uh, maybe cleaning up after your toys, uh, you know, tidying up the shoe rack or Thank clearing the place. So we have these uh, who brush their teeth, you know, who prayed in the morning when they woke up, all these. So we have a, quite a list of them. And on this chart, there is, so we put their name in a column form and then each of them has their own, it's a colored one. So one of them is blue, one of them is yellow, one of them is red. So every day you get to put the stars and they really look forward to this. So after you accumulate like maybe 40 stars or 30 stars or 20 stars, because I don't, I don't, give, this, I got, I don't give the same number for all of them because their age is different. And of course, for the older one, I expect uh, better results than the younger one. So when you get a star, maybe 40 or 20, uh, for you, you, you get to choose what, uh, you know, what you want or what we can get you, or I decide. But of course it has to be an agreement between me and the child. So they love books. So what happens is for us, we, uh, they tell me, mommy, go buy me a big Nate book or go buy me a wimpy, a diary of the wimpy kid or a princess book. So they give me like, this is the book I want. And you know, this is the title of the book. So when they get that amount, if it's 40, if it's 30, 
of course, I have also to own up to my promise. So I go and get the book for them. So, but you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent. So that is one of the rewards that we have. The other reward that we have is, especially um, last year, because they were online, uh, they were schooling online, and they were, uh, we were also working from home because of the lockdown and because of the pandemic. So we had to come up with quite a number of activities. And there was a certain period where they really missed having a party. Uh, so they said, you know what, we need a costume party. We need to go to a costume party. So sometimes you just have to fit in into their, into their world. So what happened is we arranged a costume party. Of course, only us in the house, uh, we arranged a costume party. And we all had, because that was their instruction, everyone that is coming to the costume party had to dress up in a costume party. So we all had to dress up in Batman, in Superman, in... So everyone that was in this house at that particular time had to dress up. So we all had, you know, the mask, the cap. And this is something that really they related to because, I mean, they're kids. This is what they like. So everyone had to walk in and present themselves, you know, as Wonder Woman or as, I don't know, Super Woman or Super, you know. And that is one of the things that we also use. The other thing I would add uh, when it comes to reward system, we do certificates. Uh, we go online and look for certificates online. There are some websites that you can just print them for free. Uh, cool. So. So we just, and, you, and they're editable, so we type their names. So we say maybe somebody has, uh, you know, like I said, my first son, especially him, he loves to read. So we find something that speaks about reading. So we get him a certificate for reading, you know, a best reader for the week. Uh, we, got, or we get a certificate for maybe the girl or the other, uh, Jeremiah, the second one. So we get them certificates and we have these episodes. And we make it like in our house, we make it a big deal because we, we create a stage. We take them videos, you know, we, we like shake hands and present the certificate. And so it, it's, it's something that they look forward to. And, you know, if they don't get a certificate for a while, you find that they will ask, mommy, I did well, mommy, I've been good. How come I've not received a certificate? So it means it motivates them to to continue to do well, or if they didn't get a star. Mommy, you know, I, all this week I've been waking up and I've not missed to pray in the morning, but I've not seen a star. So it also keeps you on your toes because, I mean, you have to do it. You have to be consistent mm -hmm. about it. You, you can't really be tired. And it helps uh, with them behaving well, I must say, you know, because they also want to please you because they don't want to you know, to be deprived of that privilege as well. Um, mm. I don't know what else to say, but uh, those are some of the... You've said a whole uh, lot of real things, words. you know, <laughs> I just like, okay, bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> I know, you know, you said a whole lot of things. And basically, you covered a lot of things. And all these things you've said is on positive, I can only see positive relationship between you and your children, which a lot of parents are missing out. I believe everyone who listened to her, you will agree with me when I said, I saw her parenting skills and it was worthy of emulation. A lot of things she's saying, I, I can't even do it. Like, I don't even have the time. But she's so patient. You know, parenting is really a personal thing. One thing I want us to realize, I've said it over and again, that it's not a standard. The fact that she's doing it does not mean you have to do it like that. But you have to find time to, mm. to create your own special parenting skills. Don't forget all the motive is for you to have a better child, to raise amazing children that is going to be useful for themselves and better the world at large. Well done, and you've been, in fact, you've done well. I'm just going to pick out a few things from what you have said. Like, I have to just say them again because they are, people must hear that over and again. You mentioned something about follow through, and I said it in one of my videos. You have to mean what you say and say what you mean. 
you know she she mentioned she cited, uh, she cited an example about when the one of the child one of the children were uh, maybe she misbehaved and she had he had to go through the consequence of staying back at home at that moment i can boldly say it wasn't easy for you but you followed her true <laughs> because it's very important for us to make sure that our words are good the moment as parents that we start to devalue our words we turn them to garbage instead of words we don't mean what we say we don't mean what we do then there's no way we can instill discipline because the child will know that it's not a mommy that's why i said in one of my videos you're calling your child but your child will not listen to you that is the common question that i get until the same time what change because your child already knows she's not serious she will still raise her voice hope come here hope come here not until the same time it means it was it's already registered in the child's brain that or not under the 10 times before we answer because mommy is not serious that means you've not been following through with whatever you say you have not been meaning you, you didn't let your word be gold our words as parents must be gold and not trash not garbage please let underline this and that is one of the things i learned from our words today and i've already made a video on that also before he said a lot and of things about Oye, okay i, I just want right. to cut you short sorry on right, that no on that aspect of you know uh call, you know like calling or calling the child okay especially for those that are <laughs> should know Network. at a very young age it should okay. be calm and no you know calm and no at a very young age and for you to be able to establish that is that you call the child by their name you know you call the child by their name you make sure you have eye contact with the child and you speak in a normal tone you know you speak in a normal tone and you only speak once you know but as you're speaking whatever the command is make sure they understand that this is a verbal authority like you mean what you say you know because mm -hmm. there's a way because there's a way you can say it you know oh you stop you stop i mean the child yeah. will see that there's a it's not i serious. am talking to you stop now yes it's you are yes. not listening you are telling your child you are not listening <laughs> out there the child is going to be listening another thing is some people are too soft and some are so too strong if i might if i can use that word because you have not given the instruction first but the first time you're coming you're coming very strong can you clean up now some the, those are the things i put down and i want us to talk about because we sometimes we pass our aggression i know you're tired as mother especially mothers i know the father you are the father you're already exhausted from work but don't forget these are children and your stress is not their problem the your, our stress is not our children's problem so we have to ensure this can happen to anybody i'm telling you many time i see myself that i'm going towards that direction i try to call myself and that's why i'm saying just breathe breathing is going to help just breathe breathe into your nose and let it go through your mouth it's going to help sometimes we can be so exhausted and we really want our children to understand just the way we are sometimes we put them in our level that we forget that they are only five they're only ten we want them to understand mm -hmm. the things just the way we are feeling and we tend to uh pass across our aggressions to them and that is why we have to be careful if you want your child to follow through the instruction if you want your child to listen mean what you say and understand your tone the way you say it matters. You can say, I'm just saying, uh, come here. If I say to a child of two, come here, please. Can you come here? Without doing anything, it's confusing. And the child might end up not even coming to you and like lost. I said it in one of my videos that the, the, the early years, they want instruction, clear direction in black and white. And I also want to add this quickly, which I think I also saw that in you before I became a mother, about saying thank you to everything. He wants your child to have good mannerism. You start, you don't wait. You know, we get a lot of mm. comments on our page, on our Facebook, on YouTube, and we get a lot of you know, you know, people coming and saying it's not possible and things like that. It's actually up to an individual how your parenting skills should be. Whatsoever we say here, it's just a, a, uh, what we have researched and what we have experienced and what we have come bring together to say that this has been proven. However, it's up to you because you have to know the vision of the kind of children you want to raise. When you give your, I made a video about that also, you're feeding your baby 
and you are just telling, please have your food. By, by the time the, the child is done drinking the milk, you say, thank you for drinking the milk. If you want your child to be saying thank you to everything, you also have to say thank you when you give the things because they don't know yet. Yes. And don't forget that your child, mm -hmm. your mirror. I'm just going to go through quickly to the things I said. I just speak from your words and I want to say them again. You mentioned a lot about reinforcement. Please go ahead and check my video also out on reinforcement. You know, you mentioned the positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement, positive punishment and negative punishment. These are very useful. But most of the time, people don't know when to use the positive one and the negative one, and they get confused. If you are supposed to use positive reinforcement and we are using something else, also we are affecting our children psychologically. So we have to understand when to use them and how to go about it. Also, in, uh, in uh, episode 7, I talk about clear direction. I think it's very important for you to see the video if you're not seeing that. Clear direction. You can find that on our YouTube channel, The Vision Guide. Clear direction. It's episode 7 of Parenting Essentials. Then you mentioned something about overpraising children. Apparently, I made a video on that also before. And I was using, I used one of my children as an example about, uh, there's a question. Okay. Okay. Uh, please, if you can just write me the best question in the paper, please. Thank you. Please, you can drop your question even as we discuss. Please drop your question. I think I have some questions already. Please, uh, somebody's here to manage everything with me. Just drop your question. I'm going to receive the question and I'll read it out. And uh, uh, Rachel also is going to help us out with them. Okay, we're talking about clear direct. Uh, Overpraising children. I made a video about overpraising mm -hmm. children, talking about my daughter drawing, and I said, "Oh, fantastic, great! She wouldn't have taken time to go ahead and try to learn how to draw more." Mommy said, "It's great." Mommy said, it's... "Then they feel the ego." That was exactly what she was saying about you not telling him that he did well when he actually did well. There is a way that we can also encourage our children not to miss out in the purpose of praising them. So, overpraising children actually does more harm than good. You are doing great. Children are very proud. They feel, mm, it keeps ringing. I'm doing great. Instead of you to learn more, they tend to, it's okay, there is no need to learn more. Mommy said I'm doing great. And even if the word is coming from their parent, both is either mommy and daddy, they just, if, in fact, especially when you have built the positive relationship before, they trust everything. Mommy said I'm doing great and that's what matters. So let's be careful the way we praise our children so that we don't over praise them and end up leading them to where they're not supposed to be. It's very important. And also one thing I learned about what you said today is teamwork. And I made a video about team building also. You know, I said, if your child is struggling, don't just say it's the child's business. Let everybody get inside. Somebody need, needed to learn the multiplication table, but everybody got involved. You know, that one thing I tell people is turn into game. You say, you said somebody was asking another, another person yes. was asking the order. And it became fantastic. That is the best way for children to learn. You know, you don't need to raise your voice. You don't need to shout. If everybody's involved with love, like it's a game, it, it will not become a burden. They don't see like big deal. Oh, I need to learn. I need to learn. They see like it's a fun thing to do. So it's very important for us to learn this habit. Don't, and most of the time, the parents are too busy, especially the dads. They don't see reason why they have to get in sometimes. They don't see the reason why now I know the playground and uh, play area, the soft play area are closed. But some parents, some fathers have never been to the soft play area with their children before. Go and meet your mommy. Especially the African men. I'm, I'm not, uh, I know the ones that are here are good. Those who are supposed to hear it, they're not here. Go, it's your mommy's business. No, it's a, it's a family thing. Building up, raising great children, it's a, it's a, it's a job, combined effort. And it's intentional. It must be intentional. It must be, you cannot do it by, you are blind. You can, let me, you take one day at a time, you sleep and wake up. It doesn't work like that. That is why only the vision can guide you. You have to know what you want. You have to know what you want and let your vision guide you. You have to picture, this is what I, I want. It's not like you're planning the life of your children. However, you have to picture, my child should be able to do this at this particular time. Then you walk towards it. So that is where we say, only the vision guide. And it must be intentional. It must be intentional. Please, uh, babe, please help me write out the question. Let me write out the question so that we can go ahead and... Um, okay, that's it for that. I put some things down here. I'm just going to run through them. I have two questions before now also, which I'm going to run out. Uh, okay, I hope we still have time. Okay. Okay, I put something here. And we have said about that, we already said to that about the punishment and discipline. 
Also, I said something. I said, separate the emotion from discipline. Separate your emotion from discipline. I've already said that. Pass, don't pass on your aggression to your children. Separate it. The way you feel, you cannot use that to judge the way you're going to discipline your children or punish, punish the, the way you're going to punish or give instruction to your children. Then again, criticize the behavior, not to the child. If a child has done something wrong, your duty is to criticize the behavior. This is not good. I am not happy with what you did. Not that you are not happy with the child. Don't forget, the easiest way to do this, anytime you remember our job, our duty as parents, what's our duty? Our duty is to love, love, love. If they are good children, we love them. God forbid, if they are bad children, we still have to love them. If only we can do our duty, every other thing will fall in place. The only duty we have as parents is to love our children. We, are not, we don't have power to control their emotion, but we can instill discipline into them. So love, 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 and it's going to be great. Thank you so much, baby. All right. Eh? What's that? All right, okay. I think uh, <laughs> I've been told that I need to go. I, I don't know how to do this, but this we have to finish. Okay, you criticize the behavior of the child. You explain why you think what is wrong or what they have done is wrong or why what they have done is wrong. Let them understand. Do you know that what you have done is not good? Because let them see reasons. Always explain. Don't let us be the old African parent where that they, they don't see reason why they have to tell their children why. See, let me tell you, if a, children, if a child she understand why, they won't try it, except there is an issue. Because they know it's not even safe for them. Most of this thing, most of this why is for their, is, is for their safety, is for their betterment. Just let them understand. If you go there, you would have cut your arm. I say, don't go there, I told you. Now you cut your finger, I told you. But they don't even know why. And because they don't know why, they will still want to go to find out why that you're not ready to tell them. Very good. Yeah. So, so they will still go ahead and look for why, where they're not supposed to get to why. All right. So I'm just going to start with my, okay. There's something very important that I thought I'm, I'm going to share today. Self-discipline. Discipline is good. Do you know what? There is something we call self-discipline. This is just my own idea. Self-discipline. You know, there's some things just like uh, my high school teacher would say, common sense is not common. But do you know we have this sense that will actually tell us what is right or wrong. It's up to us. To believe it or not or to take it i'm not even talking about the holy spirit for those who understand the word holy spirit and they understand it. but generally everybody has this sense this common sense this thing that is called common do you know children also have this self-discipline that they know that i don't want to do this i just feel i should not do this i'm just going to use myself as an example i realized my children were growing up and they have to ask for everything before they eat you know mommy i want to take apple Mommy, I want to take orange. At that point, I was so uncomfortable with it, not knowing that I was wrong. Mommy, can I go to the toilet? After I said to you guys, when you're going to the toilet, you don't need to tell me. In the toilet, just go. But they will still come back. Can I go to the toilet now? Mommy, I want to have an apple. I said, it is your apple. I bought it there for them. I said, please just eat. Do I behave like a stranger? You know, I was just saying all those. This is your house. You don't need to ask for these things. You know, the first day I saw my children take a fruit without asking, my spirit was boiling. Then I realized that, oh my God, these children actually are the same. No, I'm, I like to cite example. We don't just do parenting by words. Some, things, some of these things, we don't realize it until it happens. And I saw my, one of my children one day was eating apple. I said, why are you eating apple without telling mommy? Meanwhile, I was the one that was telling them you don't have to ask. So actually, I was enjoying that, but I didn't realize that. I was enjoying the, the manner, the, the, the mannerism on, of asking something. So we have to be very careful about this. I said, ah, but okay, I said, okay. Then I said, then the first time I said, you're eating apple without asking. I saw the reaction on the child's face. Like, what have I done? She's the one who said, we have to, we can take. Now she's asking me, we can. So these are the things we have to do. And I said, oh, okay, that's true. You know what? But it's okay to ask. You know, I've already damaged something right there. I like to use myself as an example. This is not a standard. It's not, nobody is, no, there is no picture perfect anywhere. We are all learning every day. We all learn every day. We try something. If we are not getting it, we try something else. Then I have to say, okay, uh, you know, actually, you were right, guys. Our mommy is wrong in that area. It's okay. You can ask mommy. Say, mommy, I'm eating apple right now. Is that okay by you? So I had to like, 
bring that back. So how much more? You know, if you know how much effort I put inside, like, it's okay. You know, it's like they're bothering me. You want to eat apple, you're asking me to your house. Meanwhile, that was a good manner. And I was trying to alter that. Also, there's something, like I said, I was going to mention also about, uh, we have a lot of men and ladies out there today that they, can't, they don't have self-control. They don't have self-control. This is a point on we are where we have failed. Failing as uh, parent. The first example is a good example of, of failing as parent also, the one I said about myself. And also for those out, that out there, men especially, that cannot overlook. When they see something and scared, they want to look. Some people, they're just like that, naturally. The, the lady is very revealing or not revealing. They want to look back and look at the back. They want to look at the front. You know, they are just like that. It's their way of life. And some ladies also, when they see men, they just want to see, oh, they want to notice six packs and things like that. They want to see everything. And I've come to realize, I heard a story years back about a parent, a mother who was always dressing up in front of the son. And the husband kept telling, this is not good. This is not good. You cannot dress up. He said, my child, is, is he going to rape me? What is bad there? Are you jealous of your child now and everything? We are not, not knowing that you are instilling bad manners. It's a very bad thing for you as a mother. Three questions already. All right, and I have two with me. Okay, I'm just going to roll through in there. So it's not a good idea. So they get to enjoy the looking around. They've seen their mother over and again. It is not good. It is not even of God. I don't want to go that way, but there's no way we can separate this. This is who we are. So it is not good. You already instill the bad discipline in your children that they cannot do without looking, even if they are not thinking otherwise, but they just want to look. But they're already enjoying the looking from their mother. Please, let's be careful on how we treat our children. Uh, the first question before I go to my own, I have a niece of five years, a nephew of four years. How can we straight them up? They are becoming naughty as they grow. Uh, this is part of what we have said, and it's not a question we can actually jump into. However, I'm just going to try. Oh, uh, Pastor Rachel, do you want to take the question up? Or you want me to go ahead? Um, I can just add to... I can just share something uh, regarding to that question okay. is that okay. um, it's never too late to start. However, depending with also the age of the child, but uh, from the look of, uh, you know, the question that you just asked, it's the children are still young and uh, you can still try and, you know, change the way they behave. But it's, it's uh, you have to sit down with them and make it uh, clear to the children you know i think there are three of them make it clear to the children that you know as parents we are not uh, we are not perfect so you also have to sit down with them and tell them you know the way we've been we've been doing things in the house it's not been the right way maybe you've not been punishing them or you've not been uh, introducing uh, consequences so you just let them know that you know as a parent I'm not perfect and I've learned uh, something new and therefore we want to start, you know, one, two, three things. And therefore this is what is going to happen. And uh, so you, you, you like list them down and don't, don't put so many negative consequences. You can just have one consequence for, you know, for a bunch of things or uh, some, you know, like if it's five minutes, things that you think it's a misbehavior you can just give one consequence for all of them you don't have to have so many listed out mm. and therefore uh, mm. when you talk you sit them down you tell them from now on this is how we're going to be doing it uh, when you do this this is going to happen when you do this this is going to happen and also as a parent you have to make sure that you follow through uh, if it's a child that has uh, a lot of things going on with him or her. You just find that one thing that is, you know, very, um, I would say maybe it's the most bad behavior and deal with that. Don't concentrate on the other because there are those that dominate other, other behaviors. You know, a child can be, maybe he doesn't listen or maybe he has tantrums, maybe he throws things. So you just look for that one particular uh, if it's a child that it has, it has a lot of issues, for example, you just look for that one particular issue that you think it's a big concern compared to the other issues. And you concentrate on that. 
because if you try to pick on the child on every little thing, then it, the child also becomes frustrated. So I would say pick on that particular thing, that one thing that you think it's a big issue, it's a big deal, and deal with that issue first. When you get that right, you know, then you can start, you know, uh, I believe you can start dealing with the other issues. Because the thing is with children, if you're going to make a, a big deal of, over everything, you know, toys are not cleaned up, maybe they've not woken up the time that you want them to wake up, maybe they've not brushed their teeth, maybe they've not done this. If you're going to be picking up on every little thing, then you have to make sure that there's a consequence that follows. Because you're busy talking, but there's no consequence that follows. So it becomes like a habit to them that, you know, they are used to it that you're going to talk and you won't do anything. So I would say uh, it's never too late. Sit them down, talk to them that, you know, uh, we've been doing things, uh, we are going to be doing things differently now, and this is what is going to happen. And as a whole, just... Sorry? What am I going to be? Okay, I'm just reading somebody's question to you. All right, okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so and the other thing, as I said, you know, sit them down, talk to them. You need to establish rules. So make sure they know the rules that uh, this is what is going to be happening from now henceforth. Okay. When this happens, right. this is Thank happening. When this happens, yeah. Go ahead. Thank you so much. I know you. If I give you three hours, it's not enough for you to explain things. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. However, you know, apparently I have a similar question that I already I put down. I, I have this question with me before. Yeah, just send in the question and let's see how we can go on the questions today. I have a similar question that says, what can I do when my child is not listening? He doesn't want to listen to anything. You know, sometimes when we say the child is not listening, most of the time, if I really want to, if it's a personal question, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, if somebody's asking me this question, what I do is I ask a lot of questions. Because sometimes they are not listening or my child is stubborn, it's not the case. There is difference between being stubborn and trying to understand what you're saying. So this is not a question that I have a direct question because I've not seen the child to evaluate. And sometimes at this stage, you have to be sure the child is okay. You know, these things, there are little, little things here and there. So, and again, you have to check yourself, your child, your mirror. You cannot just say at four or five and say, my child is not listening. How did you get to that point? So there is a lot of things to be checked. You can't just jump, just like she has said. So I put down, I said to myself, regulate your own emotion. Remember your job to love. Because if a child is seriously not listening at four or five and the, child, the parents are worn out, you have to start from yourself first. Because already you are stressed. You're already shouting. You're already transferring aggressions. So the best solution is, you know, you want to now go back to the foundation and rebuild. What is the foundation of you? So forget about the children and think about yourself. Regulate your emotion. Think about how you pass across the instruction. Are the instructions clear enough? Am I living by example? Am I modeling what I want to see in my children? When all these things are tick, tick, check, 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 okay, that is where you can go ahead to check how can you instill discipline in your children because at that stage i made a video recently it's a comprehensive video by an hour video on youtube is there on how you can get to know your child's interest before the age of one and a lot of people are sending messages already it's not possible children and I, it's okay i'm not saying it's possible it's my view everybody's okay to their opinion you can make your own video also and teach what you know you know this kids they hear from pregnancy so parenting must be intentional any intentional parent cannot wait until four. However, it has happened and we are not judging anyone. So you have to now check, about, check yourself. What have I done wrong? What have I not done wrong? So you check yourself and find out and ensure that your direction is clear. Bring me the cup. You are not telling a three years old baby, can't you see the cup? Are you blind? That cup, are you blind? I said bring cup. That is not a direction. That is not an instruction. They don't understand. You're getting them messed up in the in, in psychologically. You're getting them messed up. Clear direction. The cup is on the table. Bring me the cup. Sometimes we have to use gestures, especially when they are still below two years. You have to use gesture, calmness. Don't forget your calm voice, your calm face, and your calm body. 
You're trying to calm your voice, but your body's already boiling. <laughs> you don't pass on your aggression. Parenting is intentional and it's personal. I know we have a lot of questions, and I, yeah, I know we have already uh, lost some time before, and I don't want us to waste a lot of time. And also, add consequences and empathy. Add consequences. Uh, can I get the phone? Okay, I'll just, just give me a minute. I, the question are coming, so I just want to finish this. Add consequences and show empathy. You know, there is a way that you can be your child's friend and also be the disciplinarian. And this is a lot of, this is the main part that a lot of people cannot handle. They can't handle it. How can I be my child's friend? We are playing, we are laughing, and when I say no, he listens. Like, sit down there right now and not even raising voice. Can you please see if they understand? They should know when you are serious and when you are still their friends. So when you say, uh, you, this, the reason why you are having a timeout is because you didn't listen to the instruction, and that's why we have said before. Now you have to be here for a while, but you know I love you. But you really have, you really have to sit there and think about next time so that you don't do the same thing. So you ask, add empathy to you. Let, the, let them know that you feel their pain. However, they still have to go through it. Not that because you are having, adding empathy, they are not going to face their consequences. They will still face consequences. But with them, realize that mommy actually understand what I went through. And she's, she's together with me. You understand? She's here with me. All right, uh, can I have another question, please? Another question I have here with me is, uh, my child is three years and she seems not to have interest in anything. How? I have tried, but I could not. It's nothing is working. I don't know what interest. My child, at three years, my child, the child is not showing interest in any activity. The parent has tried. How can I? All right. How can I go about it? This answer is right there in my last video. It's an over one and hour video. How can you know your child's interest? I would just advise, please, because of time, just go ahead and go to our YouTube channel, uh, episode 31 of Parenting Essential. It's a comprehensive video. It's over an hour. Knowing your child's interest is not an automatic thing. You have to be patient, especially when it gets to the point of three years and you don't know yet. So it's a lot of patience involved. It's a lot of you being ready to know because you have to be able to underline. Is it about the child knowing the interest? Okay, I have, a, I have there are still messages coming here on Messenger. Please, I will need your help, babe. So you have to be able to... No, I will just read this one and I'll give you phone. There's a message that, come, that a message came in. Even... If you use a normal voice, you will still use a loudly, no, I am not trying to, I don't understand this question. Loudly, no, then when you shouted on him, he will start crying. He's already five years. I'm afraid he may influence his younger one. What do you think I should do? It's already five years. When you use a soft voice, he's not answering, but when you shout, he's crying. This question is very sensitive, and uh, it still goes back to now building a positive relationship because the child already know uh, mommy is going to shout, I'm going to cry. You have to really check what has been the routine because there is no reason why your child should not listen when you use a soft voice. Many a times also, we should not overlook some things. We have to be sure the child is getting the instruction and not on the spectrum. It is very important because I always say early intervention is the key. Waiting a day is not good at all. A child should listen to instruction. But when the child is not getting the instruction, not listening, you have to check, is my instruction cleared? Was it cleared? Because sometimes, you know, the instruction is like noise, background noise. You are giving a, an instruction to a boy who is watching TV now. So your voice is like far background noise. Mommy is saying something, but I can't hear. So you think your child is not ready to listen to you. But your, your voice at that moment is not the priority because he hardly cannot hear it. I think I'm going to do important things. Oh my, we are fasting anyways. I'll go ahead with fasting and water. So, so you're just going to uh, understand. You have to be very careful. Please, uh, those, those some of these questions, we might not be able to circle them online now. Please, if you don't mind, you can drop your number and I'm going to give you a call later because it's not everything we can say here. Because we can, before we can conclude this is the solution to a challenge, we have to 
fully understand what the challenge is. When the problem is not known and identified, the solution is difficult to give. But you have to check yourself. Is my instruction clear? Let me just leave it on that point today. You have to do it now. Don't wait because there is a younger one already. Thank you, baby. I love you. So you have to be able to be to sure. You have to be sure that your direction is clear. I'm just going to leave that on. The, that question, the person that asked that question, please let's talk after this. Let's talk after this. That would be great. All right. Thank you very much. All right. The next question, please. Please help me. All right. And you have to increase the quality of your communication. Yeah, mean what you say. We said that before. Increase quality of your communication. Another question says, how do we manage a child repeating the same behavior already corrected many times? What must I understand? What is the issue? What do I do? What is my hope? Uh, cause corrected for same issues five times within one hour and the child repeated the behavior again. I can be frustrated. Okay. This is another very sensitive question that doesn't have... Yes? Uh, pa Pastor Rachel, are you going to take it out before I say something? Go ahead, Pastor Rachel. Did you hear the question, Pastor Rachel? The network is not yes, good. Yes, I, I heard it. Uh, All right, can you just drop something before I say something about the question? Um, I Should just I go ahead say, and read uh, the question again? Okay. You mentioned uh, being corrected several times and repeating the same mistake, is it? Is that a concern? Yes, the child has been corrected like within an hour. The child is doing the same thing like five times. As you said, you know, uh, the parent, they need also one to check how, how are you correcting the child? You know, is the instruction clear? As I said before, you need to properly and clearly tell the child why why you why why you why you're correcting them or why they're facing the consequence you know you need to be clear you need to have develop a a clear instruction a clear plan uh i mean miss oya has said it all have a clear plan have a clear instruction as to why you're correcting that child because sometimes you correct a child but they don't understand you what exactly what you're saying you know you say don't put but don't put where you know, you, didn't, you say don't touch, but don't touch what? You know, something like that. You have to be very clear. And even the consequence, uh, is the consequence behavior effective? Appropriate. Yes. Mm. Is the consequence effective? Because, uh, you know, sometimes I remember uh, when my kids were younger than they are right now, you would tell them to go. We had, we had this uh, timeout or thinking corner. So you tell them to stand thinking corner. Sometimes they just stand there and they just, they're just happy actually because they're just laughing. Yeah. And they're enjoying they're the time. Like, okay, so mommy. we are reinforcing yes. the bad <laughs> behavior. So they will say, I just okay, a child mommy, before was... the child is telling you, it's not penny. After giving a spank, you know, it's not penny. So that's, you know, we've already it's... abused and we have to attend to it carefully. I think the question says five years. See, let me tell you, yeah, there are children. So. There's no picture perfect every, anywhere. There's no picture perfect. At all. So we cannot mm. I, 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 I expect them to just listen to the instruction. However, if it is something that you are very sure that there is a clear direction and you have tried to come to that child's level, that's why I said in one of my videos, mm. you might need to sit on the floor with the child to connect, for the child to understand that you, are, you empathize, you understand, you show uh, empathy, and you empathy. show that you are in the... You have to... Put, your, put yourself in Charles. So you have to really put yourself in the child's, uh, in the child's ish, uh, position. Think like a child. If you are in this situation mm -hmm. and you are not thinking like a child, it's not going to work. As a child, think, why do I need to listen? Answer that question not because you are the mother, but in the perspective of a child. Because it doesn't make sense sure. to the child. But when you see that all these things have been checked, done, checked, done, then you need to seek for help. Because sometimes a lot, mm -hmm. of, child, a lot of children, they look okay. But there is something, you know, delaying understanding is there. 
We have to be yeah. sure the understanding is there. The cognitive is instant. A lot of children, they just beat them for nothing, but there is no cognitive. They don't understand. And because they look healthy, they don't have speech delay. Every other thing is there. They don't get to know that this is a challenge. You know, growing up, I started finding out myself that this was actually a challenge. I do say to my husband every time, you know, I actually es escaped this one. I knew it. Though it wasn't given a name at that particular time growing up, but being going through special needs education and everything that I've done, I started to realize that, oh my God, God saved me. I was actually on this place. I was actually on that place. I was just everywhere, which makes me to understand more now that, you know, it's not about looking healthy. It's not about growing normally. It's not about the child is talking. Sometimes there is something there that you have to attend to because there is no reason why after you have shown empathy, after you have used positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, and the child is still not listening, and you have already mirrored, you have modeled what you want to see in the life of the child, and it's not working, then you have to check. Except you want to go to the other way, which I don't want to just jump into maybe spiritual. There's nothing spiritual, actually. But you just have to check yourself again. Is my direction clear? Am I mixing emotion with direction? It's very important. When all this is in place and you have shown empathy, you have shown clear direction and it's still pass, it persists, then please seek for help. You might need to see a specialist to help you evaluate the child. All right, the next question, please. I hope I've been able to answer that question. We have more questions. How many more questions? Please help me unlock this phone. Thank you for waiting. Thank you for joining. This is from the Vision Guide. Thank you for joining the special edition of Parenting Essential from the Vision Guide. Okay, in case, in case where a child of two years old kept climbing chairs, uh, climbing is normal. I've not finished the question. It's okay. It's a gross motor skill. Now, <laughs> you know, when we, are, we, have, we have to pay for gymnastics for our children, people don't get it. Back home, they don't want us to climb. Why, why, why can't we climb? Let me finish the question. I just jump into that statement. In case we are a, two, a, a child of two years old is climbing the chairs in the house and you don't want him to get out with the same behavior, what is the positive reinforcement or punishment for such child without shouting or spanking him? One, the two years old child is, if you beat a child of two years old, you're just... You're just making the, you're just reinforcing the negative reinforcement. You're just giving reinforcement. You can do it more because they don't even understand. However, don't forget that let's be thankful that your child can climb. At two years, a lot of people are taking their children to therapy. They cannot even take step. They need therapy because there is no, there is no, um, now the, the physical development is not there. There is no coordination. There is no balancing. So it's normal for every child of two years that want to climb. It is okay. However, it is our duty to tell them that that is not safe for you and to teach them that, you know, it can, that is why we have to take them out. They have to burn the energy. If you see that your child wants to, to play, if you have a staircase, join, turn it to game. Let's go upstairs and come back. We don't climb chair because it's not a good manner. Let's use our stairs. Join the child. You know, the child is helping you to work out. Just help your child. Go through the stairs. If you have a playground, just go and slide. Take them out at that time and, and let them know this is not a good behavior because if you don't actually tell them, they will go out and do the same. However, it is a way we can train our children, you know. <laughs> I remember when one of my children growing up, she really like, of course you know I have a girl. She likes climbing and everything. She likes to climb. She likes to do everything. She wants to climb in a very nice way. So then I realized that the, the better, the earlier I take her to gymnastics, the better for me. She was one year plus. Oh yeah, let's go. Gymnastics. And I, I saw the joy in her. So the earlier we take what looks negative and turn it to positive is better for us. There is a way we can always take that thing, that advantage. See, I tell parents, there is nothing that is an advantage. That thing that it seems like this is not good. We can turn it and take advantage of it. My children, my, you can say, some people say, my child is talking too much, interrupting. I was just like that growing up. But the advantage was not taken. If my parents took the advantage and if they understood that this child that is talking like this, what am I going to do in engineering for God's sake? What, what, which school am I going to lose? You know, back then, you tell me, if you are brilliant, you go to science class. Why do you, what is happening in science class? It's science for everybody. 
I went, but the only consolation I said it in my last video, I always say it is like, I met my husband in that department. That's a good reward for me. Because my certificate, my first degree certificate is almost as useless as nothing. But the good thing that God has given me consolation, at least I met my most coolest handsome bobo. You don't understand? That's a package. So there is always something. Even I see it as a disadvantage, but there's always an advantage in every disadvantage. If I didn't go there, maybe I won't see him. And God, God knew, God was aware that you have to go through that department to find that special guy, that cute, handsome, God-fearing man that I've prepared for you. So what am I saying? Take advantage of everything your child is doing. It's a two-year test. Don't do it in the house because it's no good. Your child will not go ahead and do it outside also. Climb the stairs, run in your compound, go to the playground, and keep explaining. At two years, they still, the child might not be able to understand more. But when you go out and do it with the child, by the time the child is coming back, already exhausted, one, two, you explain, you know, the chairs are for sitting. We sit on the couch, not for climbing. That's why we went through the stairs. Tomorrow, I'm going to take you again. So you get engaged. Get involved. Let the child see you as team partner. We are in this together. I also want to climb. Let's go through the stairs. I hope I've been able to answer that question. Another question, please. I think you don't have... Yes, it's true. The early intervention is the key. It's not all about meeting the, the milestones, true. You know, I said something to parents, don't worry. Don't say my, my friend's child is already reading at two and my own two years cannot even say more than two words. As long as you're doing your part and the child is not just stagnant, there is a movement, it's okay. They will end up meeting at the top. What is bad is for you to overlook, like, no, it's okay, my child is okay. Don't be a selfish parent, I always say. I have speech delay. My child must have speech delay. No. Do your part as parent and see the progress. As long as you can see little progress in your child, it's okay. As long as it's not stagnation. They will all meet at the top. All right, let's... Uh, what the time? <laughs> okay. Ah, the time is gone. Thank you for staying. All right, another question. Is there any certain way to start giving consequences to their action? Hmm. Pastor Rachel, over to you. Is there any certain age to start giving consequences to actions? Um, I don't think there's any age uh, because, as we said, every consequence has to be age appropriate. Appropriate. So, I mean, um, even at one year old, you can give a consequence, but as long as it's age appropriate. You know, you, you don't expect uh, a one year old. Uh, Maybe to take a privilege from them or, or to do, if, you, if you're the kind of parent that maybe does use uh, spanking to spank the, a one-year-old, I mean, it won't work, you know? So there is, uh, the consequences have to be age appropriate. That is the first thing. Because the young child has got to understand that, oh, I did this and mommy was not happy or you know, daddy was not happy because <laughs> they exactly. did, you know, a different thing. Uh, so they, it has to, they have to relate. They have to understand that uh, when I do this, this happens, you know, but it all depends with age appropriateness. That's what I would say. It all depends with age appropriateness because children are very, they know more than we think they know. They understand more mm. than we think they understand. Mm. Yeah. So, you Thank know, you very there's much. Uh, okay. different, different kind of parents that uh, you find some of the parents are like, uh, their attitude is like children will always be children. So they really don't bother much to correct them. And there are other parents that are like, it's either my way or the highway. There are other parents, as Ms. Oya has said, they have, they try to build a positive relationship uh, with, the ch with the children, but also they do set up rules. Though we have a positive relationship with our children, but uh, this is the boundary, you know? And there are other parents that uh, maybe they don't even know where the child is at that particular moment. If you ask them, where's your child? Or they don't even, they are so uninvolved. Somewhere. You know? Mm. So, yes. And you also have to follow uh, the rules. Parents also have to follow the rules. See, my children, yes, by the grace of follow. God, I, I'm blessed to have them. They are very clever. They will state it to you live and direct. So we better be oh, ready. Yes. Because sometimes you don't even know where to hide to. Don't say it and don't do it. They will give you reasons and yes. you have to explain yourself. It's like you are in the court. You know, 
Oh, and yes. growing up for us, that is like very rude. And, and this, that's the way I see they are, they are getting more intelligent. They are understanding. You know, Mr. Kikuni, he said, uh, how can I be like you, my old guy? You are my director. We are just following your footsteps. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. All right. Okay. See, we have a lot of questions. We can't take them home because time is gone. And I'm, I appreciate people waiting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the remaining questions and I'm going to make video on them. Because of time, we will not be able to take more questions. And I'm going to be bringing uh, my friend. She's a pastor, I said before, so permit me to call Pastor Rachel Monene. I know anytime I call on you, you won't say no. And she's going to be coming back again. I know very soon when I call on her, she's going to come back again, and we're going to do this together. The questions are quite a lot. We are receiving them on our DM, on our messenger and everything. So we'll not be able, sorry, apologies today. We won't be able to answer all the questions because of time. However, I'll bring her back, and also I'll try to make the response video on the questions. All right. And there's something I want to say before we go. Align your expectation with reality. We we said a, a scenario of a two year two years old two year uh, five years, but sometimes we forget to align. We forget to align our expectation with reality. Two years old, you expect so much. They are children. Is this realistic? When you expect something, is this realistic? It's two years. Sometimes we just work ourselves up unnecessarily and start to fast and pray. We just want that child to grow up. It's a process. It's a process. Please don't forget to always align your expectation with reality. And stop comparing your child. Stop comparing your child to your friend's child. Comparison will not help you. I said to people that have been privileged to talk to before, if you use your children as friendship, hey, it's a, it's a disaster going somewhere to happen. It's good to have friends. But when you start becoming a parent, let your parenting skills be. You can emulate good things. You can buy ideas, but it's not your standard. Because at the end of the day, you will step on each other's toes. Yes? There's a question for Pastor Rachel. Uh, can, can I see the question, please? Ah, uh, you pin it. Uh, back there. Okay, let me read from here. Oh, this is my sweet friend. Back in the, yeah. Back in university days. Ah, this is Ayafiko. Madam Ojomo, I salute you. I love you. I miss you. This is my good friend from university days. I used to run after them. Please teach me. What is the solution to this? I don't know why I went to engineering, but I saw my husband. She can relate. She can relate. She understands very well what I'm talking about. I will wake you. You have to take Don't sleep, Oyeriti. You cannot sleep. You have to teach me this. I don't understand what the lecturer was saying today. What is this? What is this theory? All right, I'm just going to read a question from her right now. She said... Uh, read something sometimes back that after age of four it is up uh, yeah after uh, this one yeah, yeah. yes after age of four it is appropriate to spank but what happens when the spanking seems to make the child adamant rather than submissive okay uh it's actually a statement about spanking see i'm not going to say any word about spanking for parents I, educationally academically or whatever it's you know by research Spanking is an error because the child is going to end up spanking uh, another child. However, I cannot underline. I know Pastor Rachel doesn't spank. For me, I'm not supposed to say this online. Sometimes if it were rant, but they understand. And we're going to explain why. Why did I do that to you? Was that good? I'm not happy doing that to you. And that I know it's not good. You know, that's the way. But however, you know, the word that I believe that is on the line part that I can. The, my word says spanking. Spare the rod and spoil the child. I still believe in that word. However, I've seen parents that are just spanking unnecessarily. And it's going to be a massive disaster. Very massive one. Mm -hmm. Your child will tell you it's no more than beating. Uh-uh. It's no more than beating. And I see, and this makes me remember something that happened when I was growing up. There was this auntie that was close to my family. She was married to a man at that particular time. And this man will always beat her. Every small thing, the man will beat her. A married lady with broom you know this local broom she the husband will buy new broom every time to beat there was a time i was talking to this auntie because i was privileged to have a lot of grown-up as friends growing up and i realized i was just advising them we are not going there today i don't even know where i got this brain from all right 
so the, the sister said something like one one time she said you know my husband didn't date me for one week i'm not feeling good i want him to beat me uh-uh. a grown-up said that <laughs> yes she said i'm not happy he didn't beat me i'm not happy that is already demonic you know and it also the children can get to that point mommy didn't beat me ah, what is this now is it no more than beating it's making me strong so when we get to that point we have failed as parent and we will not fail as parent it's up to you if you're going to use spanking or not. I'm not going there. It's up to you. If you think sometimes you want to spank, it's totally up to you, but know why you're doing that and let the child understand. I am not saying spank. Please don't quote me. I am not saying spank. It's not my job with my research and what I've learned. You're not supposed to spank. But if you want to do it, please know exactly what you're doing. Also, it's also uh, okay. Uh, do we have, okay, let's just stop for now. And, uh, I want to say a big thank Ms. you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just, yes, please. Uh, when it comes also to, you know, uh, if you want to spank a child, one thing also parents need to understand is that, uh, as you said, you know, it's, you don't take your frustration on the child. You have yeah. to be, if you're going to be a parent that is spanking a child, you have to make sure that you're also in control of yourself. Because mm-hmm. sometimes the parent is spanking a child and they're not in control of themselves. And therefore, it becomes something else, you know? You can do it once in a while, but it should not be something that you introduce all the time. And it's one, not in you know, the you you, Yes. <laughs> you, make the child, you make the child feel like, is there something wrong with me? Like, am I that bad, you know? And the other so many things that you can see in the child that are positive you know you can introduce a positive reward so that to yes. make them stop whatever they are doing you don't have to Pastor Rachel, them all the time. Stop, sorry to cut yeah. you short do you know a lot of parents sure. they like to spank but they don't like to give reward when the child has done something good they don't mm-hmm. remember this positive the... reinforcement but mm-hmm. they remember the consequences so this mm-hmm. is not fair for children as much okay. as we are saying over present children is not good, however, when they have done something, especially what, what they were doing wrong before, let them know, celebrate it, talk about it. This is yes. good. You have done mm-hmm. well. Before you were not doing it like this. That was why I was not happy with the action. Mm-hmm. Let them know. Let them know that they did it well and gave them reason yes. why they should try to do more. It's very important. I am just going to call this a day. Sincerely, we have a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions. And then and we are, I'm going to definitely bring her back. And next, in the next two weeks, I have another special guest for us. And back to back, for every two weeks, I have about three people ready to be coming on this platform. It's going to be back to back. Please keep sharing our videos. This video after now is going to be on our YouTube channel. We are, it's going to be on our So if you want to listen again, just go ahead. It should be there by tomorrow. This playback is going to be ready by tomorrow on our youtube channel just go ahead to the vision guide at gmail ah, sorry that's our email never mind you see all right so just go to the division guide youtube channel and just watch again and please share with families and friends Let's we are just learning together there's nobody who is perfect our parenting skills i've already mentioned mm. there are a lot of errors if you watch our real talk with moms we all share our opinion and I said about the things I did wrong and would uh, will do better in my next set of things, you know? So it's about learning. It's not about, I mean, so he said she knows or no. It's not about me. It's about coming together to be better parents. It's about positive parenting. It's, a, it's all about intentional parenting. It's all about the vision career parent. So thank you so much for coming on this platform today. However, there's something I want to say quickly before we go, because it relates a lot to our question. Yeah. It, uh, it relates a lot to the questions we have asked. I said something, I, said, I put it down in my notes because I wanted to say it. I said redirect. Instead of saying no, especially when parents of, I've seen, I've, I had this question over and again. Oh yeah, my child is always saying no to me. You have to redirect. If your child is saying no to everything, uh, come and eat, no. Are you listening? No. I'm calling you, no, there's something wrong. So you have to redirect your instruction. For that moment, your household are not allowed to use the word N-O. You cannot. That word must die in your house. 
don't ever say no to the child, the father, any grown-up that is staying in your house. It becomes part of your rules to help that child. Then instead of saying no, you find a way of redirecting that word instead of using the word no. For example, instead of using don't or stop, why not can say, uh, you can say, can we do this? Why not we try this? Just use another word. Just you be direct. It's very important. I've seen, I've seen uh, children and parents coming to me and saying, you know, yeah, my child is saying no, he doesn't want to listen. And immediately the child is saying no. It goes to, my child doesn't want to listen. My child is not ready to listen. No, it's not about your child doesn't want to listen. It's about you redirecting and letting your child know that the word and no is not for every response. It's not for every response. Thank you so much for today. See, I have a lot of on my notes that we can touch. We definitely bring uh, Pastor Rachel back on our path platform. And don't forget, in the next two weeks, we have a special guest that is coming. The flyer will be coming on by next week. And after that, we have a special guest also that will be talking about early childhood, strictly early childhood. That is in the one month, two weeks, back to back. So, and also, after that, I'll be bringing Pastor Rachel back. And also, something great is going to happen in June. I am bringing my mama, Pastor Shola, back also by June. So, stay tuned. It's going to be amazing. Thank you so much, Pastor Rachel. I'm going to just allow you to say your final words and say uh, whatever you want to say to people now. But I just want to say thank you, everyone. You know, it gladdens my heart to see how much turned out, to see how people stayed, even with the struggling with the connection at the beginning, we moved from one platform to another, but it stayed, you know, it's, it's, it's what, you know, I love you, I love you, I love you, you are the best, and I'm not just playing about it, I love you, I might not call you, I might not see you, but the truth is, I love you, I can see a lot of people, I can see a lot of people, uh, I've said about, uh, 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 is still right there, Mrs., uh, a lot of people are there. I saw Mrs. Uh, uh, yeah, Sister Bella, Miss, uh, Sister Mary, Mrs. Johnson. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Pastor Rachel, over to you. Would you like to say a word or two before I end this broadcast? Um, what I will want to say, you know, the great book, the great book says, children are like arrows in the hand of a mighty warrior and uh, with arrows what you do with arrows you target them i mean you aim them to a certain target and therefore for us our children are our arrows and we it's our responsibility as parents to aim them you know to the direction that they ought to go which is the direction of success you know so as we are parenting and as we are disciplining our children, as we are, you know, nurturing them and taking care of them, uh, we need to guide them and direct them to, a, you know, to a path that will lead them to succeed, to succeed and also success. So it's very important to be intentional about how we train our children, uh, you know, put a structure in place, make it clear, have a, you know, a clear uh, plan in place uh, that you know your your children will be able to to follow through and even you as a parent you'll be able to follow through and it has to start with the parents you know the parents are the role models they're the best example you know as you said we have to love your children but if if in the home there's no love even between the parents it also mm. reflects on the children so it has to start major problem with, it's a major yes, problem it has it has to start with the parents. The best thing a father can do for the children is to love their mother. And the best thing mm. a mother can do for the, for the children is to love their father. When the children see, they will, you know, imitate that. You know? They should be How able to you... learn love yes. between you and your husband. They should be sure. able to learn empathy between you and your mm -hmm. husband. Please, parents are, are on this platform this moment. Please, let's do it. Even if you're not happy doing it, do it for your children. Show empathy to your husband. Show love. If there's something in our family, these children are sure of is like, yeah, daddy comes first. Mommy loves daddy. Daddy loves mommy. They were discussing sometimes. I know there is no time. They were telling, no, whatever mommy says, daddy will say it. Whatever daddy says, mommy will say it. They already know. They wanted to yes. do something. They, I was overhearing them. Daddy and mommy, they will say the same thing. They will say the same thing. So that should be the testimony. The, parents, the children should sure. learn that empathy is a must. We have to show love. Mm -hmm. But we can't tell them, 
uh, do this and we are not doing it. It brings me back to your child, it. your mirror. Yeah. Yeah, your child, yes. your mirror. Thank you so much, Pastor Rachel, for coming. And thank you, everyone, thank for staying. So I can much. still see Mommy Pat. Yes. I can still see her. Just stay tuned. She's coming here next few weeks. And it's going to be awesome. The fly is going to be out, and we are going to get more information on it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you. I just want to give you up from your house right now. I sincerely want to all... I sincerely want to hear Sister Mary, uh, Mommy Pat, uh, Auntie Doreen, Adewumi, Adebaju, Yeinka. Thank you for joining, Davis Wanjo E. Please, if I murder your name, sorry. Sister Lawrence, thank you for joining. Unzila Ni, Unzioka Wan, sorry, pardon me, Wanjo E. Thank you for joining. And I have. Um, David one one E, thank you for joining and Sister Grace, <laughs> thank you for joining, thank you for joining. I can't see everybody, but that's much that I can see for now. Thank you so much for joining. I love you from the depth of my heart. Mr. Kikumi is right there. I can't see him again. He's still alive. Mr. Kikumi, are you still there? I can't see you anyways. My husband said you are there. All right, I'm, I'm sure bring you one of these days. I know you're tight schedule, but you won't say no to me because they really need to hear from the source, my director. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for joining. I'm from all of us from the Vision Guide. We say a very big thank you for joining. Thank you for staying. Thank you for taking the stress with us and just going to another platform and you stay joined, you reconnected. Thank you so much. I really appreciate Thank you so much from all of us. Thank you, Pastor Rachel. Thank you for joining. Thank you, thank you for the thank you so much. wonderful words. I really appreciate you. Thank you, you for the to opportunity. Thank you. Uh, it, it was my pleasure that you agreed to come. Thank you very much. And I appreciate it. I'm not taking it for granted. You are blessed. I've been trying to look for you. I hope you were there. That's my kid sister. Yes, I've, not, I've been trying to look for you everywhere. That's my one and only Kid sister, biologically, even though I have a lot of them. Uh, don't worry, a lot of days there also. You are my kid sister, they are right there. I love you all. I love you. We have a lot of, you know how it is. My music. Thank you so much. We talk after the show. Thank you so much, everybody. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Stay blessed. Bye. I'm going to. I'm going to. By the way, my artist is nice. You can contact the vision guide. CBG styles. You need to see this. I'm going to post a video. You need to see this. Please patronize us. Place your order. Go to our page. Place your order. The vision guy style. Anyways, by the way, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. I love you.